Hello and welcome back to yet another space science video. This is a follow-up to my space elevator video where I explained why the design was flawed and could never work. If you want to watch that video, click here or here, but for the rest of you, here is a brief recap. Ultimately, even if the space elevator could survive this beating, it would just become a massive cosmic blunder for space junk. The Earth would be entirely surrounded with a massive cloud of metal particles, making any space travel below geostationary orbit literally impossible. So basically, the best case scenario is that the elevator is destroyed, and it was all a huge waste of money. And the worst case scenario is that it survives long enough to effectively doom the human race to remain trapped on Earth forever. But anyway, I think that a space elevator is impossible. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to make one. Okay, I feel like I should rephrase that last statement. I think that this is impossible. You see, I have a policy. Never criticize an idea, only criticize designs. We have seen countless times in history that things that seemed impossible can actually be done. The problem is that many people misinterpret this evidence to mean that anything they create is ingenious and no one can criticize it or else they think the world is flat. Oftentimes, designs like these are fundamentally terrible. They are full of holes and honestly have no chance of succeeding. That's just reality. Just because I have it doesn't mean it's true! I'm going to use solar roadways as an example. They wanted to start building roads out of solar panels, however many people started to criticize them. The road is just a bad place for traditional solar panels, there is no question. We wonder about people who reflexively dismiss our concept without trying to understand it, or go on public forums and attack us. Perhaps they are the descendants of those who argued that the earth was flat. Or perhaps they are the voices of larger entities who now feel threatened by the, by the paradigm shift that is solar roadways. However, despite the obvious flaws, they were stubborn and stuck by their design. Now the reason that I use the word design in this case is because that's all solar roadways is. It's not an idea. Ideas are vague and have room for interpretation and problem solving. Solar Roadways was a failed solution to the real idea. So what was the idea behind Solar Roadways? Getting energy from existing infrastructure. Despite what most people think, the more vague an idea is, the better. Instead of saying that you want to make a better can opener, say you will come up with a better way to get stuff out of a can. Now, instead of just reskinning a potentially flawed design, you have the chance to create something that's actually better. In the case of solar roadways, that means that they could instead make solar shingles for houses, solar park benches, or they could even take a different approach to roads, such as running pipes under the road that absorb the heat and run a generator. The key to creating a good design is to be able to let go of what you think it should be and let yourself discover the best solution. But now to apply that thinking to the space elevator. For years, this is a space elevator that we have been sold. People did discuss different ways of climbing the cable, but nobody ever questioned the cable itself. Which, as I explained in the last episode, is the biggest problem with this design. Now we have to give up on this design and look at the core idea. The core idea here is sending things into orbit using the rotation of the Earth. I could make it even more simple, but for this video I think that's good enough. So the problem with the original design was this, the Ring of Death. or. Actually, it's more like a cloud, but whatever. The space elevator swung right through the path of every piece of space junk in orbit, which would have inevitably led to disaster. So this is our problem that needs to be solved. I feel like the best way to describe this is with a map. This map shows the speed of the debris relative to the tether as it gets further from Earth. In low Earth orbit, you can see that the debris would be moving about 17,000 miles per hour. The Earth's surface is moving about 1,000 miles per hour. So, we can say that very close to the Earth, the relative velocity is about 16,000 miles per hour. And obviously, at the other end of the map, we can see geostationary orbit, where both the debris and the tether are moving about 7,000 miles per hour. That means the relative velocity is just zero. And to fill in the rest of the map, I use this chart which shows velocity versus orbit height at various points. And the final map clearly shows that the debris is less dangerous the further from the Earth you are. Now I have a second map which shows the density of debris based on location. Quick disclaimer here, this is much less concrete than that velocity graph. This is only an approximation. Also, when you look at a picture like this, it looks like debris is evenly distributed in this area. 
But what this graph is really supposed to show is the percentage of debris that cross a specific plane in orbit. That means that the equator is always 100%, and that as you move further towards the poles, that generally decreases. Again, if I wanted to make this accurate, it'd take tons of work and math, so hopefully this placeholder is good enough. Now we have two maps, the velocity of the debris and the density of the debris. Now it's time to make a third map, which is a combination of both. This is what I'm going to refer to as my danger map. If we were to build a real space elevator, we would want to avoid these red areas at all costs. So this is where I came up with a new design for the space elevator. I was laying awake at night, and I just thought, hmm, what if we just went around the cloud of doom? It seems simple, but it solves many of the space elevator's problems. If I overlay my design on this danger map, you can see that it is much safer from debris than the old design. Also, the angle of the tether actually makes the journey easier. The original design required cars that could climb straight up. But this is very difficult, and some people believe that it was just impractical to try to do it with solar power. But with my design, the tether starts off almost horizontal. This makes the takeoff much easier since it's almost like driving on a road. The angle would increase as you got further out from the earth, but since you're spinning around it, you would also be losing some weight. I want to keep this video short so I won't run the numbers now, but it could open up the possibility of solar powered cars on the space elevator. Now I did try to come up with some potential issues with my design. Climbing from the poles instead of the equator would mean a longer trip. In fact, it adds over 4,000 miles to the trip. But considering that the total trip was already more than 22,000 miles, that doesn't seem like as big of an issue anymore. It's sort of like the difference between flying from New York to Los Angeles and your flight being delayed 45 minutes, then flying from New York to Los Angeles. Yeah, it's sort of irritating, but it's a hell of a lot better than flying your plane through a hurricane, isn't it? If you thought that this video, or even my other Space Elevator video, was entertaining, please leave a like and share to spread word about the reality of Space Elevators, or as I called in my last video, the Cosmic Death Blunder. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'm Conhathy, bye.